Welcome back to Gruber Motors. Today we're going to do a Tesla Roadster battery autopsy. The Tesla Roadster was a motorless Lotus Elise chassis with a thousand pound battery system jammed inside the car with a crock pot sized three phase AC induction motor that cranked out 288 horsepower. Now Tesla was not always a giant company and when they got started they had a dream to make an electric sports car. Since all they had was an electric drivetrain and no ability or facility or equipment to make car bodies, they went to Lotus in the UK, who makes cool sports cars, and picked the Lotus Elise chassis and went through the process of electrifying this Lotus Elise sports car. Although it sounds simple, to solve the never-ending engineering problems, they eventually modified the Elise so much to make everything fit that only six to seven percent of this car today is still Lotus Elise. The propulsion battery pack in a Roadster is called an ESS pack, which is an acronym for Energy Storage System. It's comprised of 6,831 individual lithium ion cells. What Jose is doing here is removing a sheet that we're going to repair. And we'll take you on the bench here shortly and show you that process. By the way, we've been working on these flat black battery packs for many, many years. And we found out just recently from a Tesla old timer that these enclosures were originally built in Thailand by a barbecue grill manufacturer. Suddenly we began seeing a resemblance to our backyard barbecue grills. So in this thousand pound Tesla Roadster battery pack, there are 11 sheets that are comprised of 621 18650 lithium ion cells very much comparable to the type you have in your power tools or your laptop. There is also a microprocessor that controls various charge functions in this sheet. It uh, actively balances the cell voltages and also mitigates the danger of overcharging or potential damage from over discharge. There are sensors inside the ESS pack that sniff for smoke, check for the existence of water immersion, if the car were to be driven into the lake, for example, and firmware that continuously monitors the pack to ensure that it is thermally stable. These little cutouts or windows on these bonding plates connect to a cell in the sheet. Each cell is independently fused, not once, but twice on the other side as well. There is a cooling jacket that touches every cell for thermal management with glycol or antifreeze being pumped through all the cells with temperatures carefully controlled and monitored by firmware. Here is the input and output of that cooling jacket and you can see it begins to snake up and then eventually winds its way through every single layer of cells. There are two ABS plastic clamshells that hold the cells and cooling jacket in place, filled with a thermal potting compound for optimum temperature management and keep anything from vibrating loose. Inside each sheet, there are nine bricks, which is a collection of 69 of these cells connected in parallel. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you connect batteries in parallel, the voltage remains the same four volts DC in this case, but the power available is additive and increases with each cell added. The bricks, all nine of them, are then connected in series and the sheet voltage ends up being around 36 volts. So these 11 sheets now, with 36 volts each, are connected in series for a total string voltage of 396 volts DC, which is what's fed into the inverter or the power electronics module, PEM, which it's called in the Roadster, which now converts all of that DC energy to three-phase AC voltage to drive the propulsion motor that propels the car. Now, cells in these sheets at times go bad. They become resistive and parasitic, and they pull down the voltage in a brick. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we were able to change these cells, like in a flashlight, where you just simply open it up take your old cells out and throw them away. 
In this Roadster sheet, because of the amount of thermal potting compound and adhesives, there is no effective way to remove one of these cells. To do so, you would have to move an entire bonding plate to get at that cell, and then most likely destroy the cooling jacket that runs through and touches every single cell. What we're going to do now, though, is open up one of these sheets and show you what's inside and what prevents us from easily changing cells. So let's open up one of these battery sheets and see what's inside. The first thing we're going to have to do is remove a collector plate. And since these are live voltages, we're using insulated tools. And what we're going to do is pry off one of these plates. There are 69 fusible link wires connected to 69 cells. And we're just simply going to pop every single one of those. Now that the plate is off, you can see all of the bonding wires that have been snapped off of the cells. By the way, these fusible link wires or bonding wires with this collector plate combination was actually one of Tesla's early innovations because prior to that time, lithium ion cells were bonded together with a stainless steel strip and then spot welded. What Tesla did was used a thin fusible link to both provide a connection and a fuse. So now that we've removed all of these connector plates, there are 1,242 fusible link connections that have been now disabled on this pack. And what we're going to do now is go inside where no man has ever gone before. What we have here is the cooling jacket, which, as we discussed earlier, touches every cell. And since we've begun to open up these clamshells, we can now see where that cooling jacket runs. And there it is there, goes back around, touches these two cells, loops again. And you can see the thermal potting compound is only as high as the cooling jacket itself. On the other end here, which makes it impossible to get this clamshell apart and take it off, there's actual epoxy that is holding the top of these cells to this clamshell here. So splitting this apart and opening it is virtually impossible because you would destroy everything in between doing so. In the day, Tesla had wire bonders and some automation robotics that connected all of these tiny wires in sections to each of the cells. To create a battery pack for each Roadster, they had to create over 26,000 of these battery sheets since each car had 11 inside that large enclosure. We hope you enjoyed our video of the Tesla Roadster battery pack autopsy, which we believe has never been done before. As always, hit the like button, subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see us do, please leave that in the comments below. Thank you for joining us at Gruber Motor Company. I'm Pete Gruber signing off.